let's face it, it's not the uh, healthiest of jobs being a media composer, writing for film, TV, computer games. We work in environments that are dark, we develop studio tans, we rely on food takeaways because all of our meals we take at our studios, we seek solace in alcohol and for some of us drugs, and there is the abuse, the narcissistic abuse that we get from directors getting notes late and all of that kind of stuff. You know, to quote Bill Burr, it's hardly as bad as, say, roofing in Southern California in a heat wave with red hair, but it is tough. We had a panel recently at Spitfire Audio with some fantastic top composers that centered in on self-care. It's not going to come out at all. A fantastic journalist called Alexandra Hamilton Shaw did a great article about that panel, basically took some of the strategies that these fantastic composers had for self-care and turned them into 10 top tips. I would like to know what your top tips for self-care are with this quite difficult job that we do, how to avoid the studio tan. Here's my top tips. I guess the first is get in out of the cold. In reverse order, kind of. Uh, certainly number one, I think, is the most important. So counting down, I hope you're getting. So I'll get the most boring and obvious one out of the way first. Our brains are connected to our bodies. Contrary to what the medical profession will argue, our brains aren't kind of held in suspension within our skulls they're actually connected to our body. And if we don't nourish our body, we don't nourish our brain. Fortunately, the nourishment it requires is very easy to administer. Eat well, hydrate, drink lots of water, and do just a modicum of exercise regularly. Conversely, our brains kind of operate our body. So if you don't look after the brain directly, you're not looking after your body. So you need to get enough sleep as an example. I know this is the pot calling the kettle black. We know that if we smoke lots of cigarettes it's going to harm us so we don't smoke lots of cigarettes yet we repeatedly subject our brains to all sorts of harm ignoring the long-term effects that that may have. Alcoholics, drug addicts, how we're often stereotypes, our breed, musicians, but addiction is a symptom of a mental health not the cause, nor indeed the cure that we seek for that condition. It's not just because we're hellraisers, we're an odd bunch. In order to achieve great things in music, we need to, when we're very young, shut ourselves in a room on our own, learn to play the guitar, learn to play the piano, learn how to write lyrics. It takes a huge amount of passion and dedication. Inherent in that is maybe just a little bit of madness. How about we combine the presumption that you don't have any time to look after yourself and do any exercise with the presumption that you're also a massive fuck off procrastinator. This is something I actually do is I know I'm going to procrastinate. I know I'm not going to write first thing in the morning. So I go and procrastinate into this camera every morning up a volcano. Try and be true to who you are and, and how you work. I mean, if you're a night owl, you're a night owl, there's nothing you can do to change that. You can't suddenly reset your circadian, circadian or rather, rhythms. Mine have been set since I was 18, I was a baker. It's interesting to observe my patterns now. Between the hours of four and I'd say eight in the morning is when the kind of buns come out of the oven. That's my productivity time. Creative ideas come, uh, I would say, between the hours of four and seven in the evening, the bit in the middle. I procrastinate. I've decided to do different stuff than just watching, you know, stuff on the internet. Not that. Binging with bad Casey, not by accepting that, you're kind of on your way to accepting who you are as a person. The minute you do that, you're on a road to self-care a bit more. I'm <laughs> just, I don't know what I'm talking about. And if we can't be honest with ourselves, how do we expect to be honest with our families? And. Uh, this is the big issue for self-care, is not getting the support that you need. Your family, your business partners, without their support, it'll leave you feeling isolated. And that is not good for your noggin. It's okay to say no. People won't dislike you for it. The biggest mistake of my career is saying yes to absolutely everything. When I listen back to much of the music that I've made, I could just hear that I'm rushing that I haven't spent enough time on it. One, it's not good for you to be overworking. 
And two, the objective of building a career is recognition and you won't be recognised for poor work. And I know you're going to completely ignore me on that count because I clearly don't practice what I preach. Came into London, plane got hit by lightning, stayed overnight in London, got a flight to LAX, then got a flight that next day to San Francisco, and then flew the next day from San Francisco to Washington DC. Went to Dulles Airport to come back to London, and that plane was hit by lightning. So I got a later flight, arrived in London, taxi to Airedale, string section for this. Now heading back to Edinburgh tomorrow, got to mix those two episodes. And I think it's good to be candid with the people that you're working with. Everyone understands that in order to earn a living in this day and age, we have to maybe work on several jobs. I think it's better to earn the trust of the people that you're working with. They trust that you're going to deliver something brilliant than to lose the trust in the people that you work with by kind of fibbing about what you're working on, how much time you're putting into something, or just the fact that you've maybe gone to a parents' evening. This is all about building relationships and relationships I don't want to sound immodest but what, what we've done today just sounds absolutely amazing I'm really really proud of it so you know I've faced the adversity and have um, exhausted myself doing it but that is my duty towards you know adamant inside number nine and with you adopting this new candid and honest view it is okay to ask for help to reach out whether that be to other composers assistants or indeed to the people you're working with it's okay to say listen i think that this will just be a hundred percent better if i just had a couple more days to work on it. it's always good to inquire ask for help and if it's not available buckle down and this is the biggest mistake i've made is i've never stopped there have been so many opportunities where i could have taken holidays or got myself together rebuild regenerate if you will and i've just because of my paranoia about the sense of needing to work, I've taken more work on, crap that I didn't need to do, and in so doing, I haven't allowed myself to recover before the next kind of bout of... Be thinking about this vlog, self-care, and thinking why I'm doing it, doubting whether it's gonna be a good vlog. And the reason I doubt it is because I'm really at low ebb. When I get tired, I get kind of anxious and, and the, the imposter syndrome really looms in hard. And I think, well, maybe it's useful actually to demonstrate to you how acting irresponsibly like I am now is not really sustainable. And that's what this is all about. You know, you have to look at yourself, talking about taking breaks between work. You have to imagine that you're a, an athlete. You know, athletes, when they come off the racing track or off the boxing ring, you know, they have a massage, not because it's nice or they want to, I don't know, have ending. I think the kind of general point that I've never really reached with the vlog, it's always been, I don't know, uh, implied but not ever explicit. Earning money out of music is really, really difficult. I don't know of anyone who earns money out of music who isn't just a phenomenally hard worker. In fact, it was interesting that Lady Gaga this year won an Oscar and she went on the kind of rounds after that doing interviews and stuff. And um, they said, you know, weren't you nervous about the like Oscar performance and stuff? And she just went, no, no, not when you work as hard as I do. You know, you get it to such a point where it's physically impossible to make a mistake for something that you do to be wrong because it's so ingrained within the muscle memory. And that doesn't really apply to anything that we do as media composers, but I do think it's just an indication of, um, you know, we're not lucky so-and-sos, we're not hell-raising drug addicts and alcoholics. Anyone who's succeeded in the music industry has worked really fucking hard. So a lot of what I'm talking about self-care-wise is the whole kind of brain being connected to the body, looking after the body, the body looks after the brain, look after the brain, the brain looks after the body. There is something for me that is though totally cerebral. It, it poses no threat to our physicality other than a threat to our mental health. I've been uh, suffering from what I thought was burnout. The symptoms aren't what you'd expect, but the main symptom that I've been suffering from is a sense of being an abject failure. And I had this kind of notion here a few days back on my way out to the States, I suddenly realized that this kind of knot that I've been getting, this sense of being an utter failure, was happening when I did one specific thing, and it was this. Looking at Instagram and Twitter. So I would recommend as a 
point of self-care to silo these activities. I think they are really important. Being present on social media to build a career, I think, is a is a is a modern requirement. Instagram gone, delete, and Twitter. And whilst I'll continue to use them, I will silo it to my work laptop. It'll no longer be with me when I'm with my family. When I'm feeling a bit rough and I'm on my own, you look to it as a comfort blanket, and it is the very opposite. So, inspired by Dream Masters, silo your social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Don't think it's very good for us. Another thing I'd like to try, a friend of mine, hugely successful in the music industry. Everyone wants a piece of him. And I said, you know, how do you cope? How do you stay alive? And he said, just once a week, I have, insert name here, time. Turns out just half a day, which he dedicated to simply doing something that he wanted to do. A time of the week where you just devote a bit of you to you. Time of the week when you don't feel enslaved to everybody else. I know this is probably overcooking it, but it's, uh, I think, long term. If you feel that you're not in control of your own time, that you're basically, you're not running a business, it's running you, it can get uh, problematic and you can find yourself losing it a bit from time to time. Three, four, maybe even six hours a week may seem like a trifle, but it's a means in which you can enjoy your success, truly, not just by buying new bits of equipment, a vintage set, but by truly being in control of your time. That surely is prosperity, being able to decide that you are, for just a few hours a week, going to do absolutely nothing. You're not going to be in the service of anyone else or any other thing. I've said this so many times before, but the reason for taking heed to what the composers at the panel suggested, what I've suggested, what maybe people are suggesting in the comments below, is that the one certainty about your career, if you're starting out, media composition, is that you've got to be in it for the long game. I don't know of any successful composer that I've met, and I've met many, who became an overnight sensation. Your business is you, so you have to invest in you and your future. You have to play the long game. And you can't do that if you're a rattling kind of shell of a person. So take care of yourselves. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, if you want to be notified, you can tell I'm absolutely freezing. If you want to be notified the next time I put a video up, ding that bell. And I always forget if it's left or right. I think it's left. One of those will be fantastic if you've enjoyed this video. Do take care though. See you next time.